concept of certainty equivalent technique. Let us try to understand what exactly is certainty equivalent technique. So, under the previous technique what we have learnt that is risk adjusted discounting rate technique, the adjustment of risk was made with discounting rates. Now, people had argument against RADR technique. They started arguing that why are you adjusting the discounting rates when primarily the risk is with the cash flows. The idea is to adjust the risk. So, why are you adjusting the risk of cash flows with discounting rate? Why do not you adjust risk of cash flows with the cash flows itself? So, here comes the concept of certainty equivalent approach where the risk of cash flows is attempted to get adjusted with the cash flows itself. Let me give you an example. Suppose I am conducting your test. Test is of 100 marks. Okay. Now, is there certainty that you will end up scoring 100 out of 100? Is there a certainty that you will score 100 out of 100? It may happen, but it cannot be certain. Correct? It cannot be certain. So, scoring 100, is it certain or uncertain that you tell me? scoring 100 will it be certain or uncertain the answer obviously scoring 100 out of 100 is possible we are not saying it is not possible but it appears to be little uncertain but based on the preparation level that you have you tell me one thing out of 100 marks of test on financial management is it certain that you will score at least 10 your answer will be yes is it certain that you will score at least 20? At least 20 means 20 or more. Is that also is certain. So, the moment you are listening to me, you are smiling because, come on sir, we are your students. 10 and 20 marks you should not even ask. I would rather say, is it certain that you would score 50 out of 50? No, I mean 50 out of 100. Is it certain that you will score 50 out of 100? Even that seems certain. So, suppose generally each student will have a different range of score. But suppose there is a student who tells me that sir, if you are conducting a test of 100 marks, if I have to score something, I am certain that my score will not fall below 80. That one student's concern that one students respond to my question is sir I am certain no matter what will be the complexity in the question paper my score will not go below 80 that is the comment of that student fine that means scoring 100 for that student is still uncertain but scoring 80 is definitely certain so that means the certainty equivalent factor for that student I repeat certainty equivalent factor for that student will be 0 0.8. It will be 0 0.8. So, uncertain marks were 100. Apply to that the certainty equivalent factor and certainty equivalent marks will be 80. Now, there is another student who is little weak. That student will say that sir, I am not certain of scoring 100 out of 100, but I am certain that I will score 60 marks. So, for that student, the certainty equivalent factor will be 0 0.6. So, 0 0.6 as certainty equivalent factor, when multiplied to uncertain marks, that is 100 marks, it will give you 100 into 0 0.6 that comes to a result of certainty equivalent marks which will be 60 marks. So, do you know what we are trying to do? The marks multiplied by their certainty equivalent factors. So, we are considering marks which are uncertain on that we are applying certainty equivalent factors and what we get is certainty equivalent marks. 
So we cannot call these as certain amounts or certain marks, but they are certainty equivalent marks, equivalent to certainty. Let me give you example in the context of cash flows. If I report you that there is a project with the following possible amounts of cash flows, and with each cash flow, I report you the certainty equivalent factor. What you will do is you will multiply the certainty equivalent factor to the respective amount of uncertain cash flows. So uncertain cash flows multiplied by certainty equivalent factors, it will give you certainty equivalent cash flows C E C F certainty equivalent cash flows. Now those certainty equivalent cash flows are basically risk adjusted cash flows. So in some textbooks you will find that is written as RACF. RACF means risk adjusted cash flows. But the better term will be certainty equivalent cash flows. That certainty equivalent cash flows are cash flows of future but where uncertainty factor has been removed. Now you will convert those CECF that is certainty equivalent cash flows to their present values by using PV factors. Here you have to take a precaution that when you are applying PV factors, the discounting rate that you now adopt must be a risk free rate because risk has already been adjusted with the cash flow itself. Now you cannot take RADR or risk adjusted discounting rate. If you do that, it will be double effect of risk adjustment. Risk should be either adjusted by increasing the discounting rate what is done under RADR approach or the risk should be adjusted by reducing the amount of cash flows which we are doing in certainty equivalent technique. So you increase the discounting rate impact will be what NPV will get reduced. You reduce the amount of future cash flows even that will cause reduction in NPV. Either way it is NPV that is getting affected. So certainty equivalent technique this technique believes that if risk is involved in the future cash flow amounts you must adjust the risk with the future cash flows instead of adjusting the same with discounting rates. So what we will do is we will write up some notes in this aspect and then take up some calculative examples to understand the concept clearly. The next heading certainty equivalent technique. This technique believes that uncertainty is associated with the future cash flows and therefore it is not appropriate to adjust the discounting rate. Instead the future cash flows should be adjusted to certain cash flows or cash flows with certainty. This is done by multiplying factors known as certainty equivalent factors. These factors can range between 0 and 1 in such a way that for higher certainty a higher factor is adopted. Let us move ahead and write some more notes. Application of this approach would result into similar conclusion as found under RADR technique because for high risk the certainty equivalent factors will be lower which would ultimately reduce the present value of such expected cash flows. It should be noted that under this approach the discounting rate should necessarily be the risk free rate because the element of risk has already been adjusted with the cash flows. Very very important paragraphs. Let us move ahead and write further. The significant advantage of this technique is that different cash flows for different years within a project can also have different degrees of certainty. This approach takes into account the different degree of certainty associated with different cash flows. The RADR technique is inefficient to handle such situation. While writing these notes itself you would have understood very clearly that we are adjusting the risk with the cash flows. And how we are doing that I have explained you already. Certainty equivalent factors are getting multiplied to uncertain amount of cash flows 
to arrive at CECF that is certainty equivalent cash flows. Eventually, it will cause a reduction in your future cash flow amounts, which will eventually cause NPV to reduce. The most important thing under certainty equivalent technique is you have already adjusted the risk factor with the cash flows itself. So now you should not apply risk adjusted discounting rate. So the discounting rate over here necessarily should be risk free rate. Let us proceed ahead and start taking calculative examples for much clearer understanding. The very first question in your chapter, question number one, NJ Limited is considering one of the two mutually exclusive proposals, project A and project B, which require cash outlays of rupees 1 lakh each. The risk free rate is 10%. The expected net cash flow and their certainty equivalents are as follows. So they have given project A and project B details for year 1, 2, 3, 4. Their cash flows are given along with their certainty equivalent factors. Determine NPV of both projects and decide which project should be selected based on certainty equivalent technique. So once you have read this question, what is that we find to be done over here? Let us try to understand this point very well. In this question, two projects are given with four years life you are supposed to compute NPV and to do that this time you are required to apply certainty equivalent technique. So here there is no adjustment of risk with the discounting rate but adjustment of risk will be done with cash flows. How will you do that? Any project you select you will write the first column as year then second column as uncertain cash flows uncertain cash flows the reported cash flows over here in the question are uncertain amount of cash flows to these cash flows you will first multiply the certainty equivalent factors you will not be asked in the question to compute certainty equivalent factors these factors the certainty equivalent factors will be informed to you you just have to multiply certainty equivalent factors to uncertain amount of cash flows to arrive at certainty equivalent cash flows. Once you do that, you get the cash flows which are free from the factor of uncertainty. Though we cannot call these as certain cash flows, but we will call these as certainty equivalent cash flows. Now next thing what you have to do is convert this into present value. To do that, you have to take a precaution that you should not use RADR or risk adjusted discounting rate the risk has already been adjusted with the cash flows now you would apply a risk free rate of discounting for discounting CECF to their present value which is an easy task for you you had been doing that right from the time when you have started this chapter capital budgeting once you get the total PV of CECF it is basically total PV of inflow from that you subtract the cost of the project or PV of outflow to get NPV. So let us see how to present the solution over here and carefully take note of the solution. Project A, year cash flows, CE factors, CECF, then PV factors at 10% and PV of CECF. Year 1, 2, 3, 4, the reported amounts of cash flows which are basically uncertain cash flows then the reported amount of CE factors CE factors will be multiplied to their respective cash flows and what you will get is certainty equivalent cash flows so cash flows multiplied by certainty equivalent factors will give you CECF that is certainty equivalent cash flows then you plot the PV factors using 10% discounting rate which was basically a risk free rate. When you compute the present values of these CECF, you get 9,54,456. From that, you subtract the total PV of outflow, which is given as 10 lakhs, and you get the resulting NPV as a negative NPV for project A. 
once you have seen how to do for project A, actually on your own, you can calculate for project B. Project B. Same way the entire presentation to be made. If your calculations are correct, your answers must match with what I am showing on screen. The total PV of CECF comes to 11,13,148. One or two rupees of rounding of difference is acceptable. Too much of difference is not good. Total PV of outflow is 10 lakhs. Here we get a positive NPV and therefore between the two projects based on certainty equivalent technique it is project B that is better because project A is giving you negative NPV. So the conclusion at the end would be between the two projects project B is better because it provides positive NPV.